Um, good afternoon again. Thank you for being here. My name is Kim Davenport, and I'm the product manager for OpenStax Tutor Beta. And welcome to the OpenStax Tutor Beta Pioneer webinar. So um, <clears throat> with me is Melissa Hardy. She is a professor of biology at Salt Lake Community College. And today we'll be hearing from Melissa about her experience integrating OpenStax Tutor Beta into her uh, biology course. So the structure of the webinar will be as follows. Um, <clears throat> I'll just give a quick introduction to how Melissa has been using OpenStax Tutor. And then she and I will present uh, some best, best practices and tips using OpenStax Tutor Beta with a few demos to show you the system and how it works. And at the end, we'll have 10 to 20 minutes for Q&A. So as I said at the beginning, um, while we're talking, please feel free to drop your questions into the question section of the webinar panel, and we'll get to all of them at the end. So um, with that, as I said, Melissa Hardy is an assistant professor of biology at Salt Lake Community College, and she piloted OpenStax Tutor Beta in her course um, for the last year and worked closely with the OpenStax research team on an impact study. And I'm so pleased to have her here today because um, as part of the research <clears throat> impact study, I think we've all learned a lot about how to best integrate OpenStax Tutor Beta into your course. And so she's put together some really thoughtful and effective um, best practices for us or for instructors who are thinking of using it. And we're hoping that her tips will help you hit the ground running um, in your course. So with that, I will uh, pass it over to Melissa. Great. Thank you, Kim, for the introduction, and thanks for everyone who's joining us. Uh, today, Kim and I are going to be giving a brief intro to OpenStax, like she said, OpenStax Tutor. We're going to cover what OpenStax Tutor Beta is, um, how it can help you in your biology course, and most importantly, we're going to spend most of the webinar going over the nuts and bolts of how you actually use OpenStax Tutor Beta. Okay, so first of all, what is OpenStax Tutor Beta? Um, OpenStax Tutor is courseware that works hand in hand with the OpenStax test textbooks. These are free and online, uh, the textbooks are, um, to help students master the material. Um, OpenStax Tutor Beta is courseware that adds on to that. Um, it's online, it's easy to use, and it's available um, at a very low cost to students. So how does OpenStax Tutor Beta help students learn biology? Um, as you know, many students studying biology, um, particularly when it's their first biology course, really struggle because of the extensive content as well as a ton of unfamiliar vocabulary. So for these students, the OpenStax Tutor courseware can help them practice these new concepts, practice the new vocabulary um, by engaging with the material multiple times. So the great thing about OpenStax Tutor Beta is that it's based on the idea of spaced retrieval practice, meaning that students are tested on the material um, at intervals over time. So that's different than the traditional organization of most courses and most textbooks, which presents material modularly, um, just kind of in a masked format where you get it all at once, and then maybe they don't see it again until the exam or the final. Um, OpenStax Tutor Beta is a little bit different, where students get to see and be tested on material um, more than once. So first of all, they come to class more prepared from completing the reading assignments um, before the material is introduced in class. Um, and then they have the opportunity to engage with the material again during the homework assignments um, with questions that are a little bit more in depth, um, hopefully engaging a little bit more critical thinking. And then throughout the semester, um, they're given space practice performance questions in subsequent homework assignments, uh, which cover material that was presented in previous chapters. These space practice performance questions are personalized based on how students have done with that material previously. And then, of course, the other huge benefit to OpenStax Tutor is the low cost. I'm sure everyone's aware of the spiraling cost of education, um, both for tuition and for textbooks. And this is particularly uh, relevant for me at a community college. Um, anything that we can do to help students uh, get their costs down is really important. 
So how does OpenStax Tutor Beta help uh, you in your biology course? Um, definitely incentivizing students to keep up with the material is a big benefit. It's much easier to teach when your students are at least looking at the textbook before we cover that material in class. Um, this helps uh, keep everyone more or less on the same page. Uh, it also gives you feedback and helps you to monitor student progress through the material. Um, it shows you what students understand, what they're having trouble with, and it helps to call out some of the misconceptions that they might have, which allows me to um, address those misconceptions in class. All right, so that's a brief introduction about what OpenStax Tutor is and how it might be helpful in a biology course. Now we're gonna zoom in and start to show you how to use OpenStax Tutor Beta. Um, first, I'm gonna turn it back over to Kim to show you how to set up a course. Okay, <clears throat> so you should see my screen now. Um, and for those of you who haven't yet set up your course, um, it's super easy to do. I just wanted to step through that process. So first you'll go to our website, openstax.org, and you can access um, OpenStax Tutor by clicking the technology tab and getting here. So that's going to take you to this <clears throat> website which explains what OpenStax Tutor is and kind of gives you more information about the cost and <clears throat> what we offer. And then um, once you're ready to access, to access it, you'll click access your course. Um, this will ask you to either log in or sign up. If you've already got a verified instructor account, use that, you'll have immediate access. <clears throat> and if you don't have one, go ahead and sign up for an account and then we'll verify you as an instructor and get you access as soon as possible. So once I click access your course, I'm gonna show you what it's like. I've already set up my account and logged in. You'll be taken to your um, current courses page where you can access you know, some preview courses to check it out. And then when you're ready to set it up, you'll just click create a course and this will ask you uh, a few questions and then set up your course for you. So I'm going to select the biology textbook. I'm going to select when I'm teaching. So I'll say fall 2017. It's going to ask me to name the course. So this is up to you. Uh, set your time zone. Um, it's asking me the number of sections in my course. So <clears throat> if you're teaching a class with multiple sections, like a Monday, Wednesday, and a Tuesday, Thursday, we recommend including all those sections in one course shell. And the benefit is that um, you can set up assignments once uh, and your all of your students can register into the, the different sections so that you can see the grades reports differently. Um, <clears throat> so I would say two here. And then we ask you to estimate the number of students in this course. And the reason why we ask this is um, we're based, we're supported by philanthropic funding and we like to tell our our funders the impact that we're having. So if you estimate the number of course students in your course, this helps us do that. So I'm going to say 50. And then when you click continue, it's going to set up your course for you. Um, and it'll set up, let's see, it'll basically take you to your course dashboard, which Melissa is going to demo a little bit more in detail. And this is where you can start setting up assignments and look at the book and all of that. So with that, I will pass it back to Melissa. Okay, thanks, Kim. Um, I think uh, I've got my screen back. Yep, so, yes. great. Um, we're going to start talking about the nuts and bolts of setting up assignments now. Um, I'm going to demonstrate setting up a reading assignment and a homework assignment so you can see both of them. Um, before we set up assignments, we're going to want to take um, sort of a higher level view at the material we want to cover and look at the question library and make sure to exclude any questions that you don't want assigned, either as space practiced or personalized questions for your students. Okay, so that takes us to the demo. I'm going to switch over now to OpenStax Tutor. All right, so here's our dashboard, like Kim showed you. So you've already set up your course, students are enrolled in it, perhaps. Um, or maybe this is before the semester has started and you're getting all your homework and reading assignments set up first. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do um, is uh, look at our question library. So here's our dashboard. We've got our calendar with upcoming assignments. Up here we have tabs for browsing the book and some feedback tabs. We're going to take a look at those a little bit later. For now, we'd want to access the question library. So we're going to come up here to the top right and click on our name. This is going to give you a drop down menu. And you can see we can just simply scroll down to question library and click on that. 
All right, now we're uh, seeing an overview of our question library. You can see that we have all of the chapters in OpenStax Biology, and we're going to set up an assignment particularly for Chapter 4. You can do these chapter by chapter. There's no need to do the entire textbook at one time. So I'll go ahead and select Chapter 4. Now, I don't have to select all of the subsections to give students questions. It could be that maybe I want to not have students see or engage with some of these subsections. For instance, I know that subsection 4.1, studying cells, is about microscopy, and I know that they're going to cover this in the lab, so I don't need to um, have it as part of my reading assignment. And just so you know, anything that you don't assign as part of a reading or homework assignment is something that students will never see. So we don't need to go through every chapter we're not going to cover and exclude all the questions. We just will never assign them to students. Now I can scroll down to the bottom and click on Show Questions. This is going to show us all the questions for the sections that we selected. And when we start, we're going to be here in card view. So you can see we can scroll over all of these different questions. We can navigate at the top through subsections or simply scroll down. Um, you can also see that some of these questions are sort of long or maybe they have art and we can't see the whole question. If we mouse over, um, we can simply click on the question details. That will take us to a more detailed view of the question. You can see now the art and the entire question um, plus all the answers. If we want, we can also click here on preview feedback. That will show you what students see if they select each of these individual answers. For now though, let's go back to card view and see once again the overview of our entire question library. And let's say I want to just exclude some questions. Once again, I'm going to mouse over, and you can see it's pretty simple. Big orange button that says exclude question. I'll click on that, and now you can see that this question is grayed out. It's no longer part of my question library. Students are never going to see this now when they get uh, those homework or reading assignments. And if I want, I can go through and exclude more questions. Um, let's just assume that the rest of these are fine, and I want to keep these in. Okay, now I'm ready to set up a homework assignment. To do that, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I can always click on this menu at the top right and go to dashboard. You can see that's the first menu option to get back to my dashboard. And once again, you can see this calendar. Now there are actually more than one uh, way to add assignments to OpenStax Tutor Beta, and I'll show you a couple of those ways. First of all, we can click on this orange button here at the top left on the calendar that says Add Assignment. So I click that and now it reveals a menu for adding different kinds of assignments or events. I can click directly on this Reading, Add Reading button if I'd like. This will take me to an Add Reading Assignment tab. I'm actually going to cancel out of this and show you my preferred way to add readings to the calendar. So we'll see the screen. Uh, again in just a second. Um, you can also, by the way, drag these buttons to the calendar to a particular due date, or the way I usually like to do it is we can click directly on the calendar. So let's go ahead and set up an assignment. Let's say I want it to be due next week in August. All right, we're going to set it up for uh, August 7th, and just as a sort of um, uh, best practice for OpenStax Tutor Beta. Um, I'm going to pretend I'm going to cover this in class starting on August 8th. So I'd like to have my students look at the reading, answer some simple recall questions, at least engage with the material before we start covering this um, in terms of lecture and small group in class assignments. So if I hover over the 7th on the calendar, you can see this little plus sign. I can click anywhere on the box for the 7th and this will reveal that same menu that you saw before. I'll click on Add Reading to add a reading assignment. So let's go ahead and do that. That will take me to my Add Reading Assignment screen. We'll start at the top. I'm going to give this assignment a name. Let's call this Chapter 4 Reading. If I want, I can put in a description or any special instructions in this line. And then I need to make a choice to assign this either to all sections or simply to individual sections. Now, I 
usually would like to assign this to all sections. I think like Kim said, it's just easier to keep everybody um, track of in the same um, sort of group. But if you have different sections on different days, perhaps you'd want to select individual sections so that you could set the open date and due date to different dates and times. For now though, let's go ahead and select all sections. We'll give everyone the same uh, open date and due date. Let's come over to the due date first. You can see it's already automatically populated this because we selected it from the calendar um, as August 7th, 2017. I can also set the due time. Um, so let's say I want to make this a different time. Uh, maybe I want to make it due at um, 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so I can go ahead and change that here. There we go. And if this is a time I want to set it uh, as a default for all of my homework assignments, I can simply click set as default. We'll go ahead and do that. I also need to decide when to open this assignment so that students can see it. Now, when you want to set the open date is going to probably depend on your teaching style a little bit. Um, I like to open my assignments by unit. So when students first log into the course, I like to have all of the assignments for our first unit up to exam one already open and available for them to look at. So this shows them sort of the roadmap of where they're going, um, but it doesn't necessarily overwhelm them with a whole long list of assignments. So we'll just leave this open date for now as August 1st. So students can see it uh, starting tomorrow. Now I'm ready to click on my Add Readings button. I'll go ahead and do that. And this should look familiar. This is a similar menu to what we saw when we browsed our question library. Uh, once again, this is going to be for Chapter 4, so I'll simply select Chapter 4, and that will reveal, once again, all of my subsections. And again, I know that 4.1 is something that will be covered in the lab, so I'm going to unselect that. Students will not see uh, that section in their reading assignment or answer questions from it. Once I'm done selecting uh, the readings I want students to do, I can scroll down and click Add Readings. And you can see this takes me back to my Add Reading Assignment page. Here's the list of the subsections that are currently selected. Now, if I've made a mistake, I can delete them here with this little X button. I can also reorder them. Let's say that maybe I want section 4.2 to be at the end. I can simply use these arrow buttons to move it down um, to the end so that students will see it last. I can also go back if I want to add more readings right here. But let's say for now, I'm happy with my reading assignment. Now I'm simply going to uh, find my Publish button down here at the left-hand side and click on that. It's going to publish this to my dashboard. You can see it's publishing, and once it's published, that's going to change colors and it will be available on my calendar. Okay, it's just taking a second, a little longer than normal. Usually yeah. it's up by now. <clears throat> Oh, there, there it is. is. Okay, so now it's changed color to yellow. This is uh, now ready to go, and students will see it starting on August 1st. Okay, the second demo that I'm going to do is setting up a homework assignment. Our workflow is going to be fairly similar to setting up a reading assignment uh, with the extra step of choosing which questions we want to include as part of that homework assignment. So once again, I can either use my Add Assignment button here on the left-hand side. Um, let's do that this time. This time let's go ahead and drag this Add Homework button to the calendar. So let's say that uh, August 8th and 10th, it's a Tuesday, Thursday class, I'll be covering uh, the content for Chapter 4 in class. And then after we've covered everything in class, we'll have the homework due a little bit later so that students have already seen all the material, they've engaged with it. Now we're going to ask them to answer a few more in-depth questions. So let's drag that to the 11th, and this will open our Add Homework Assignment screen. So just like before, assignment name, we're going to type that in, Chapter 4, Homework. Again, I can add any sort of description or special instructions that I like. Um, just like before, I can decide whether to assign this to all sections or to individual sections. For instance, uh, again, if I'd like to set due dates as two separate dates or something like that. Um, if you can, I'd recommend keeping this as all sections just uh, to make it easier on you. Uh, due date, this is set for 8.11 because we dragged that to the calendar. My due time is 5 p.m. Let's say we're happy with that and we're happy with our open times as well. Of course, I can adjust these as necessary. Now we have another decision to make here that we didn't see on our add reading assignment. 
do we want students to get immediate feedback on their answers or do we want to withhold the feedback until after the due date? You can see that this is selected by default only after due date time passes. Um, I personally like to give students feedback instantly after they answer each question. Um, and the reason is generally I uh, just like students to engage. I don't use these necessarily as quizzes to test understanding, um, but simply an opportunity for students to re-engage with the material. So I'm not really worried about students sharing answers or cheating off each other or whatever. Um, I'm happy for them to work together if they like, so I'm going to allow them to see feedback right away. All right, now I'm ready to select my questions. So let's click on Select Problems. Once again, we have our list of chapters and subsections. I'll select Chapter 4. Here's my subsections. Uh, I'm going to unselect chapter, or Section 4.1 once again. Scroll down to the bottom. Once again, anything that's not selected is something students aren't going to see. And click on Show Problems, this orange button down at the bottom left. All right, now it's going to load the questions. And I'd like to call your attention to the top, first of all. You can see right when I click Show Problems, we already have three problems as part of this homework assignment. These are problems that Tutor will select. Um, they're going to be personalized for each student, and they're going to be from previous chapters based on students' performance um, in those past chapters. So by default, Tutor is set to select three different questions personalized to each individual student. Uh, we can adjust that slightly so we can take that down to two questions or uh, we can increase it to four sections. So for now let's leave this at four and now I'm going to select questions that all students will see as part of this homework assignment. Once again, just like the question library, uh, this is the card view. If I want more details, I can mouse over and click on question details. This will take me to the individual question. And once again, if I want, I can preview the feedback. You can see this comes up under the answer that students will see if they select each of these answers. For now, I'm going to go back to the card view. And I'm going to start selecting questions. You can see every time that I select a question, my total problem number goes up. And of course, I would do this a little bit more thoughtfully if I were making an actual assignment. But for now, let's just go ahead and select some questions randomly um, to make a total of, say, 15. OK. So I've selected 15, uh, or I've selected 11 problems, which gives me a total of 15 because of those four selections that OpenStax Tutor Beta will give to students. Uh, once I do that, I can click, click on Next. Here's a summary of all the questions I've asked. And if I scroll up, I can see a shorter summary where uh, problems are classified. So you can see here I've got my 15 problems. These last four are the ones that Tutor will select for my students. And then these are the ones that I selected. Now, if you want, depending on how involved you want to get, there's also details about each individual question here. It gives me the length, whether this question is short, medium, or long. It also shows me where this question is classified on Bloom's taxonomy, as well as a depth of knowledge score. So if I want to make a nice mix of simple recall and more critical thinking questions, I can look at the summary and decide if I want to adjust things. Or maybe I want to bias it towards questions that are more difficult, uh, more oriented around critical thinking. I can do that as well if I want. But for now, let's say that I'm happy with this assignment. I've selected the problems that I want. All I need to do now is go to this orange Publish button, click on Publish. And just like with the reading assignment, this will take me back to my dashboard. You can see here on August 11th, it's publishing that Chapter 4 homework. Again, just a little bit slow. Maybe a lot of people are accessing it right now, which would be great. Um, and as soon as that's published, it will be added. There it is. It changes color. Once again, you can see it's color-coded um, blue for homework assignment. And now we're published on that day. OK. Hopefully you can see how easy it is uh, to create assignments in OpenStax Tutor Beta. Um, I do have a couple of recommendations for assignments. These first two on the slide I think would apply to just about everybody. Um, first, I think it works best for reading assignments to be due before the content is covered in class, and the homework assignment should be due after you're finished with the content in class. 
Additionally, frequent low stakes assignments are important. Um, research uh, has showed many times that this particularly helps traditionally disadvantaged students to have a number of low stakes assignments spaced throughout the semester. So to that end, I tend to give completion credit for these assignments just to encourage high participation. Uh, for the reading assignment, I think that's just going to end up being completion credit. Uh, that's what it's going to show you on your dashboard. For homework assignments, it will score it, and you can choose whether to enter that score in your gradebook or to simply give students credit for completing the assignment. The second two recommendations are more specific to my teaching style. Um, I like to be highly organized, have everything set up before the semester starts. Um, but once again, I do open my assignments by unit, simply so students have a finite number of assignments that they're seeing. Um, so I'll open up everything for exam one at the beginning of the semester. Uh, as soon as exam one is done, I'll open up all of the reading and homework assignments for exam two. And I think this just helps students see where they're going for each unit, um, but not to get overwhelmed with a long list of assignments right off the bat. But again, this is teaching style specific. You could certainly open up everything at the beginning of the assignment, or you could choose to be a little bit more flexible and open up assignments, um, one assignment or one chapter at a time. Okay, let's move on to how you can monitor student progress and use that to review material in class as needed. I like to take a look at homework assignments after the due date, as soon as it's closed, and see how students did. And then about a week later, I like to review the homework assignment in class, which allows me to address any misconceptions or clarify any material that maybe wasn't well understood by my students. Okay, so let's switch back to our OpenStax Tutor beta view and demonstrate how we might review those metrics. Here's our dashboard once again. There's a couple of different ways to look at student progress through the class. One of those ways is to click on this button, our performance forecast, which will show us a graphical representation of all the material covered. You can see that we've got all of our chapters and our subsections, and furthermore, that it is color-coded. So we have green um, for looking good, yellow's in between, and red means we've got some issues. So it looks like my students are doing mostly pretty well in this course. It looks like chapter five, we've got some um, problems here. So that's something we might want to address. All right, so this is just a nice, um, you know, 30,000 foot view of how students are doing. I find it uh, even more useful to look at things more uh, granularly. So we're gonna go back to the dashboard and we're gonna look at one particular assignment and show how to monitor progress on that assignment. So here's a, a chapter five assignment. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. This is one that students have already seen and completed. This is going to give me a pop-up showing the sections that have been assigned, the number of students that have completed it, um, that are in progress and not started. And now to get even more information, I'm gonna come down here to review metrics and click on that. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I can see responses by question. Um, again, I'm gonna look at this once uh, on my own, and then I'm going to project this exact screen in, in class and allow students to sort of work through the homework with me. All right, so let's just look, a, look at a couple of these questions. Number one, uh, first of all, we can see our four different answers. And 75% of the class picked answer C, which is correct. So they did pretty well. However, 25% of the class um, incorrectly uh, chose question A. Now, if you want, you can also look at the student text responses. So for many of the questions in OpenStax Tutor Beta, each question uh, comes in two parts, where first students will be asked uh, to type in some text. If I click on that, I can see exactly what each student wrote. Now, this is something I'm not gonna project in class because you can see it is labeled by their names. So I don't want to embarrass anyone by showing that in class, but just on my own, I might take a look and see what they've put in. All right, let's hide those again. Um, if we come down to question two, it looks like everyone did quite well. 100% of my class picked the correct answer. Um, coming down to question three, again, I have a split where most of my students uh, selected the correct answer, but 25% of the class selected the wrong answer. All right, so this would be one I might want to review in class. 
All right. Like I said, I project this exact uh, screen in class so students can see exactly how they stacked up with their classmates. And if they selected incorrect answers, especially if a number of people selected something that was incorrect, I'll pause here and talk about these answers and why they're incorrect. Um, you know, I'd quickly move over a question like number two, where everybody got it right. Um, but for number three, we might just stop here, spend a couple of minutes, um, address any misconceptions that students might have, maybe review the concept briefly, and also invite students to ask questions or make comments about anything they didn't understand. I would say that each homework assignment takes 10 to 15 minutes of class time, sometimes more if it's something that people are particularly confused about, but I think it's time well spent because it's one more time, one more chance for students to engage with the material and it helps me correct them and sort of get them thinking on the right track well before they encounter this material on an exam. Okay. That's uh, the meat of the presentation. Um, there's a few other housekeeping items that we'd like to go over uh, just to help students get set up and succeed with OpenStax. So first of all, uh, getting students enrolled and getting student buy-in. Really important to get students working in OpenStax Tutor as soon as possible. Uh, I introduce OpenStax Tutor Beta at the same time I go over the syllabus. I really like to spend a little bit of time talking about why we use OpenStax Tutor and how it's going to help them learn the material. So I even talk a little bit about the science behind it just so they understand why we're using this tool in class. Uh, I also make the first assignment due fairly quickly, usually the beginning of the second week of class. Um, which encourages them to sign up immediately and start working on it. It's easy for students to sign up and most of them have no trouble at all. The only issue I've ever run into is students signing up, then forgetting their password and trying to make new accounts instead of just going through the password recovery system. So I do like to warn them um, ahead of time not to make multiple accounts. But otherwise, it's really simple and usually everybody is up and running by the second week. If somebody is having trouble, the OpenStax tutor support team um, is able to take care of that so you can simply direct your students there. Um, I also like to put a short section about OpenStax Tutor in my syllabus, as well as on my learning management system. Also on my LMS, I have a link to sign up, as well as uh, the Getting Started Guide from OpenStax. That's a PDF document that I simply post on my learning management system. Again, it's really easy for students to get signed up and up and running an OpenStax Tutor. When they use the enrollment link that you provide, they're automatically added to your course. There's no extra steps, um, no troubleshooting for you to do. Okay, I think that's it for me. Um, at this point, I'm gonna turn it back over to Kim to demonstrate how to get that enrollment link, and then we'll move on to Q&A. Okay, thanks so much, Melissa. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let me share my screen. Get rid of this. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so, um, what I want to demo is how to get the enrollment link for your course. So I'm back at my My Courses screen, um, and I'm going to select the course that I want to get the enrollment links for. So I've clicked on Biology, and now I'm going to click on my, uh, this would be your name at the top, <clears throat> so this user menu, and I'm going to go to Course Settings and Roster. I click Course Settings and Roster, this takes me to my course. And you'll see here, um, <clears throat> I've got two sections set up for this class, a Monday, Wednesday, and a Tuesday, Thursday. And you see here that the Monday, Wednesday has an enrollment URL, which is distinct from the Tuesday, Thursday URL. So if you've got multiple sections, make sure to paste, post both um, and make sure that students use the enrollment link for their URL. So as students click this and get enrolled in the class, they will be added to the roster in the correct place. Um, and that's really it. Uh, <clears throat> Melissa mentioned our Getting Started Guide, so we'll be emailing that to you all, and we'll also be posting it in our knowledge base so that you can have that accessible for the first day of class. And um, with that, I think that we will go to the question and answer. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please drop your questions into the question tab in the webinar, and we will start going through those. All right. Are the questions that OpenStax Tutor selects based on student performance in previous sections, or are they randomly selected? So OpenStax Tutor Beta uses machine learning algorithms that use the student's learning history 
to select questions um, that they get as space practice, uh, personalized and space practice questions. So what that means is um, <clears throat> as your students are progressing throughout the semester, we're getting more information about the questions that they've received from you, so what sections that you've assigned, um, and more information about which questions they're answering correctly and incorrectly. So using that data, we give questions to students uh, for each student. So what that means <clears throat> in practice is that your students will have will be getting some different questions um, in those space practice slots. So that means when you're looking at review metrics, like Melissa showed, that view, some of those questions will be questions that everybody gets, and some of them will be questions that only you know one student got or some subset of students got based on their history. Okay, the next question is, can you create your own original questions? So unfortunately right now we don't support the ability to add your own questions or to edit our questions. This is something we're looking at in the future. Um, Melissa, maybe you can talk about from the question library, did you feel like you had enough questions to use for your homeworks and readings um, and uh, kind of talk about the content, like the assessments in the system? Yeah, sure. So. Um, like uh, Kim said, I've been using OpenStax Tutor for the last year, and they've definitely been um, pretty active in adding a lot of new questions. So now I think we've got fairly good coverage of the textbook. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's anything that you feel uh, is incorrect or needs to be changed, um, it's pretty simple to contact the OpenStax Tutor uh, team. There's just a button on each question. Uh, that you can click to submit uh, an error report, and uh, the OpenStax team has been very quick and responsive um, about going through those. Um, so I, I don't know. I feel like there there's been enough for me to assign to my students. Um, certainly, you could see in Chapter Four there were way more questions than I would ever assign. So yeah. yeah. Lisa was um, was part of the initial pilot, so you know good and bad, good for us in that she was able to find a lot of questions with errata that we were able to report back to our subject matter experts and get fixed. Um, but the good news for you is that <laughs> she's done a lot of that work finding those questions and we have done a tremendous effort this, uh, this past year to make sure that the errata are addressed and also that sections that didn't have enough questions um, were built out to have more questions for you. And um, if you're not familiar with the textbook um, development process. All of our questions, all of our content is created and peer-reviewed by subject matter experts. So those are all questions that are vetted. You may find errata, um, <clears throat> and if you do, there's a way to submit those to us and you can kind of see the, the progress and the status of those questions as they get updated. All right. We have eight week terms. Is it possible to set up a completely new roster so that my students from the eight, first eight weeks no longer appear? Update, I might have answered my own question. Um, eight week terms, that I have, I guess I was familiar with that, but that seems really short to me. So it is, it's, I think what you would wanna do is, let me think about this, what would be the best way? Um, I could maybe say how yeah, I would do sure. it. Sure. Um, so uh, I, I didn't demo this, but in OpenStax Tutor, you can um, click on your course roster, and you can add or subtract students, and it doesn't throw those students away necessarily. So um, I would, you know, you can keep the same roster and just inactivate all the students that are done and add new students. That would be one way to do it. Maybe Kim's got a better way. Yeah, you could do that. You could also set up a different section for the new students. Um, or you could set up another course. I might need more details from you about what you're trying to accomplish. If you if you send an email um, to support at openstaxtutor.org, and if you kind of describe what you're looking for, we could probably give you the best recommendation. Because I know you probably want to minimize the amount of course, like assignment setup that you want to do, plus make sure everybody can get in. But yeah, I just want to make sure I understand all the constraints. And Kim, it's pretty easy to duplicate a course now, is that true. right? So yes. you could just yes. duplicate it for the second term. That's totally and true. Not too. change anything. Yep. Okay. Um, next. 
can you exclude whole sections or chapters? I think Melissa covered this, but yes. Um, so as she said in the question library, if you don't want to, if you're not covering an entire chapter or section, just don't exclude questions from there. Um, when you're building assignments, either readings or homework, just don't create, uh, don't select the sections that you don't want to cover. And right now we only do it at the section level. So if you were teaching a section and you weren't covering some sub subsection in that section, there's not a way to sort of granularly remove just part of it, but you can do it at the, excuse me, at the section level. Okay, um, the next question, can you edit assignments after you hit publish? Um, Melissa, do you want to talk about your experience and best practices around this? Um, sure. So um, I, I guess it depends on what you want to do, but um, usually the easiest thing to do is simply to create a new assignment and delete the old one, um, especially if students have been working on it already. Um, yeah, I think that's what I've that's what I've had to yeah. do. I would add to that. So if you're editing, if you just want to move the due date back, that's no problem right. to do. Yeah, you can easy. edit the existing assignment, but um, it's not possible to add questions to an assignment after you've published it or delete questions from an assignment. So especially as you're getting started, you know, using the system and getting used to it, I recommend saving assignments as a draft and then making sure that it's exactly what you want before you publish it. And the reason why we don't, the reason why it's not super flexible with removing questions and adding questions is that, as Melissa said, students start to work it and then you sort of create this weird situation where some student might have finished the assignment and then you add a question or delete an assignment. So for now, the you know, save draft, make sure that you know what you're getting. And, um, and if you really find that you messed up, then delete the assignment and, and restart, re recreate it. Okay, next. Can you view an indiv individual student's results or just at the class level? So you can do the class level, as Melissa noticed, and you can also view an individual student. Let me see if I can demo really quick um, <clears throat> one of the ways that you could do this. So I'm in my course, and I'm going to click Student Scores. And this is going to load a screen that has all of the, all of the students. So these are all dummy students <clears throat> for this demo. Um, and so let's say that one of the cases that our pilot faculty tell us is, oh, I've got this kid that comes into the office hours and kind of wants to talk about the assignment. So what you can do is you can find an assignment, and if I click on that assignment, um, this is showing me the view for, oh, okay, viewing as Josephine Abood. Um, so this is Josephine's homework assignment um, that she got with her individual questions in them. So you can view the assignment if you want to look at that. And you can also view, you know, this individual student, how <clears throat> Desmond has been doing on all the assignments. You can click on each one to sort of go into more detail. But if you just want to look at completion rates and, you know, correctness, um, this is kind of probably the easiest way to look at that. Okay. Let's see. Um, does the student dashboard look, look similar to the instructors? Let me sign in as a student really quick. Actually, let me first, okay, let me share my screen. <laughs> All right, so I'm going back to this course. And at first I want to show you um, <clears throat> one feature. At the top we've got student preview videos. So this is a page on the instructor view where you can kind of quickly run through um, videos of the student experience. So the dashboard does look a little bit different as you can see from this screenshot. I recommend you check out this video. It's about 30 seconds, so it shouldn't take long. But it shows you the student dashboard is not a calendar like yours because we really want them to focus on what is coming up um, and not have to go through a calendar. So they'll see, you know, chapter one reading, their progress on the assignment, which is important. Is this something they've done or not started yet? Or, you know, how many did they get correct or incorrect? And the due date. So, um, on this student preview page, you can look at the dashboard. You can also run through a sample biology reading assignment and a sample homework assignment to, to kind of see what that looks like. So I recommend that. Okay. <clears throat> um, can you import the assignment scores into your LMS? So let me share my screen again. 
So I'm back on the course uh, scores page, which I got to, sorry, let me go back. Here's the dashboard when I click student scores. And so from here, you can look at everything in this view. And we also have an export button, which will export everything into Excel. Um, Melissa, maybe you can talk about how you handled grades. We don't have auto syncing with the LMS yet. This is something we're working on. So for the time being, it would be using this Excel document or using this page to get scores in. Sure. So um, I did try the export button to begin with, and it works fine. It exports to Excel, like Kim says, and then you can just add it to your learning management system. Um, unfortunately, my LMS had some uh, trouble this last year, so the problem wasn't on the OpenStax tutor end. It was um, that Canvas had added a whole bunch of dummy students somehow to my course, so that didn't really work for me because the rosters didn't match. I'm sure I could have found a workaround, but for me it was easier just to add scores manually, just to put screen side by side and do that. Um, but yeah, the export button seemed to work just fine. So Melissa, you know. how often did you transfer scores from OpenStax Tutor to your own? <laughs> Um, I would say uh, my ideal was to do it once a week, and a lot of times I succeeded at that. Um, there were a couple times in the semester I got behind, and it was once every two weeks. Um, I think more than that is a little bit hard on students because, you know, they like to see their progress as they go through the course. Right. Okay. And I would say that it's copying scores, that was really only about 10 minutes a week. It was not a big burden to even just do it manually. Great. All right, Let's see if we have any other questions. Feel free to keep adding questions as we're talking. Um, okay, we have, is it $10 per course or $10 per year? So students pay $10 per course. So if you're teaching a two semester course, um, you know, Bio 101 and Bio 111, sorry, 101 across two semesters, then it would be $10 per course, so $20 total. Any other questions, please add. Okay, um, well while we're waiting, we'll wait just a couple more minutes, but I wanna talk about uh, some other webinars we're doing. We have another webinar scheduled um, for getting your students started that goes into a little more detail um, about uh, getting your students started. So going, it would actually go through kind of the individual steps for students enrolling in your class. Um, we would have uh, Jeff DiGiovanni, who's our support manager, talking about how students get technical support. I think Melissa mostly covered it, um, <clears throat> that, you know, make the getting started guide available to your students in your LMS is a really good idea because then they have the steps they need to get enrolled. Um, and uh, you know, you, we don't expect that you, the instructor, would be um, would be handling technical questions. So, giving them our support email, which is support at openstackstutor.org, and sending students to us if they need help resetting their password or or anything like that. Um, we will do our best to help them so that we don't you don't have that burden on your plate. Okay. Um, See if I see any other questions. Okay, um, I don't see anything else. So if you have other questions, if you think of anything in the meantime, please send questions to either the support email that I just mentioned or communications at openstax.org if you have a more uh, specific question that's not for support. Um, thank you so much, Melissa, for the demo. It was great, and I hope that everybody on the call uh, learned something and enjoyed the demo. And thank you all so much for being here. Um, I think we are planning to post a video of this, like a recording of this webinar, so that if you think, you know, if you want to rewatch it, or if you have a colleague who's using it and you want to send them to it, that, that will be available online. So thank you again, everybody, for being here. Thank Thanks. you so much, yeah. Melissa. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.